How's it going? In today's video, we're going to go over everything you need to know about meta targeting in 2023. All right, so let's hop into this. This video is just one chapter of the larger Meta 2023 Masterclass. Uh, but in this video, we're going to dive in into a new thesis around how to target. And I promise you've never really seen anything like this. So let's get right into it. All right, so let's hop into it. So of course, this is part of the 2023 Meta Masterclass. And today we are just going over one very specific topic and really the theme of this entire masterclass is that there is no one way, but there are best practices when it comes down to it, okay? So today we are just going to be going over targeting. That is it in a way that's really never been explained before. Um, this is definitely a unique approach and it gives you the tools to make your own decisions around targeting. I'm not gonna tell you what to do, but I'll give you the tools to make an informed decision based off your business and your goals, all right? So let's get into it. Um, this can be very straightforward, so let's just get started. Now, this, again, revolves around the five-range thesis. Now, again, this is another theme from the entire masterclass. We're going to be referencing, of course, the five-range thesis and many sections, like the ROAS section, like the creative section, copy, all that stuff. Um, this is really the crux of what makes this work. Now, of course, the five-range thesis is the idea that there's really five main metrics or elements that make up your strategy or five main factors that will determine how you should build out your meta campaigns. And there are some more, there are some more metrics, but these are really the five biggest factors and it's really these five ranges, all right? So the first is your budget, right? How big your budget is um, and how much you can actually spend, right? And a lot of people will say, hey, well, if I get a good return, I can spend as much as I want, like there's no limit. And a lot of brands will say that, but in reality, the question is, how much can you spend without seeing results until you turn it off? That's the question. And that limit varies widely. Um, big brands have a very high threshold for that. Small brands have a tiny threshold for how much they're willing to spend and how long they're willing to wait before seeing results. That's really the question here for budget. But that's a huge factor. Another one is SKUs. Now, for targeting, the amount of SKUs you have or the amount of products you sell or the number of products you are looking to advertise does not really affect what targeting you choose. But in the attribution module, for example, SKUs is very important. So just how many products in general you sell, how many products you are looking to advertise. Next is data pool. How much data you have both in the ads manager and off the ads manager. So do you have a customer list of 10,000, 100,000 emails? Do you have 5,000 sales recorded in your ads manager? Do you have a lot of pixel data, right? So again, small brands will have very little data, big brands will have a lot of data. That depends, and this will determine what kind of ad strategy you should be using, okay? Next is sales cycle and average product value. So typically how long it takes for someone to buy your product after the first impression with the brand or the product. And if you don't know how long your average sales cycle takes, then you can estimate it with an average product value. So if you have really expensive products, if you're selling cars, it's probably going to take longer than a day for someone to buy after they first learn about your car. If you're selling t-shirts, you could probably get someone to buy in a day after learning about you. Okay. So that again, very much determines which strategies uh, you should be using. Okay. And the final one here is your objective. Now, a lot of people out there have very, very mixed motives. You'll have a bunch of people um, on like the drop shipping side, always focused on hack strategies, tactics to get cash now to make a return today. Then you'll have other people that are used to working with large businesses and you know they're really focused on sustainable sales and they're fine if they don't make a return for three months. Just depends. And in this presentation, we'll be going over the targeting strategies for both of these. Uh, Cause I'm not gonna judge you if you need cash now, I get it. I also get it if you wanna have sustainable sales for the next 10 years, right? And ideally, the best combination of both, okay? So this is the five range theory, and depending where you land on these variables, right? Maybe you're a brand with a little bit of budget, a lot of SKUs, some data, uh, maybe you have a, a moderate sales cycle, so it takes maybe a couple weeks to sell a product um, after they first learn about you, and maybe you need, you know, cash, you know, in the next 30 days, or ideally, you know, you, you definitely wanna return fairly quickly, but um, you don't need it right now, right? So all these variables will determine which targeting will work for you, okay? So let's hop into this. All right, when it comes down to targeting, there's always been a debate around broad versus targeted, right? Most people are doing broad these days. 
um, but still you'll hop into ad accounts managed by massive agencies, uh, the VaynerMedia types, and you'll see that there's a lot of targeting still going on. And we'll talk about why that is. So in general, here's the theory. With broad, over time, your efficiency goes up and your return should increase. There really isn't any ad fatigue, meaning your ads should last a while and you really shouldn't have to switch out creative too often. And ultimately your performance should be more constant and actually improving over time versus getting worse. The reason for that is with broad, you're targeting a huge group of people. So there's a lot of people in that pool. There's a lot of options. You're not going to be dwindling down that audience as you show more and more people ads and with the algorithm, your data simply gets better over time. You can target better and you get more efficient over time as you get more data when you target broad. So broad gets better with time, more data, and targeted, depending on the targeting, in general, you are gonna have worse efficiency over time or a worse return over time. And that is because as you start to dwindle down that audience, as they see your ads and they're dwindling down, you have less and less and less and less qualified people at a faster rate. And at a certain point, you've gone through everyone in that audience. Now, of course, there's a huge difference between targeting a 5,000 person customer list you upload and a 1% lookalike of your purchasers, right? That 1% lookalike of your purchasers, that's gonna be you know, many thousands of people, uh, but of course that customer list can be a lot smaller than that. So of course it depends on how big of uh, an audience you're targeting, right? And the more targeted, the more degradation of performance over time. So really, the more targeted you get, the faster that ROAS is gonna drop after day one. Again, day one, you're gonna have good results. You're gonna be up here, you're gonna have a high ROAS, high efficiency. Day two, day three, it's just gonna continue to get worse and worse and worse. So the more targeted, the faster that de degradation happens, the faster your ROAS drops over time. And this is true if your impressions, if your I is greater than your AG, if your impressions are greater than your audience growth for that targeting, right? So if you're showing ads to people faster than that group of people is growing, eventually you will have gone through everyone and because the audience hasn't grown as fast, um, hasn't been able to keep up with the amount of people you're showing the ads to, your performance will drop, you'll get ad fatigue because everyone will have seen the ad and then they would have bought by now if they would have bought, right? So that's where ad fatigue comes from. This really never fatigues and your performance only gets better. This typically your performance only gets worse if you're doing a very targeted audience, right? And if your impressions, if you're getting more impressions than you are getting audience growth. So if you're showing ads to people faster than that audience is growing. So if you're scaling up a targeted campaign, it'll burn out. And if you're scaling up a broad campaign, it likely won't burn out because it's just such a big group of people. That being said, if you are showing ads to a targeted group of people, slower than that targeted group of people is growing, you won't really see that much ad fatigue, right? If you have a 1% lookalike, you have 100,000 people in the group, and you only show you know, the ads to a couple people in that group a day, you can last a very long time. And if that group is growing faster than you're showing ads to people in that group, you won't see ad fatigue because the group's simply growing faster than you're showing ads to. The issue is when you see great results, you're like, oh, this is working, this is amazing. I wanna scale this up, I wanna put more budget in it. And the more budget you put in, the faster you go through that audience and all of a sudden you're out of people to show your ads to and that's usually what happens. So that's why, again, you can really scale broad, targeted. You can scale to a point and you're either gonna burn out your audience or burn out your audience, right? Um, unless you just do a little bit of budget where you're not spending very much, you're just doing a little bit of a drip and that audience is growing faster than you're showing uh, the ads to, if that makes sense. So this is the thesis behind broad and targeting and that's really the entire video could end here. That's all you need to know to make your decisions, okay? But of course, targeting is a broad term for a bunch of different types of targeting. So it depends how targeted you are, right? So the more targeted you get, the more degradation, okay? All right, so let's move on to a few other points here. So time also means more data, which means better results. And again, that is why broad works because you're utilizing the algorithm and you get more and more data, you get better and better results. That being said, Let's say you have a new ad account day one, you have no data. You don't, the platform has no data, right? Targeted might perform better day one than broad because you're giving it a head start with who to show the ad to because broad gets better over time. Targeted can, but usually it doesn't really matter if targeted is getting better, more and more knowledgeable, more data over time because you're still just shrinking that audience at a faster rate. So again, time equals more data, which equals better results. So day one, 
targeted can actually outperform broad, okay? All right, so let's move on to this next point here, which is time equals more impressions, lower audience size, which is what I just said. So again, the same thing, even though you get more data over time, more efficiency, so targeted could get, be getting more efficient. It doesn't matter because you're getting more impressions, you're lowering that audience side, now your qualified buyers is getting less and less and less. And again, this all goes back to if daily impressions is greater than targeted audience growth, okay? So this is really the summary of targeting. And this is really all you need to know to make your targeting decisions, all right? All right, let's move to the next section here. So best practices for targeting, right? Broad outperforms over time with more spend. Over time, broad will typically outperform everything else, especially and specifically for prospecting, for bringing in new customers, right? Broad costs less than targeted, right? Meta charges a premium when you want to target people because there's more demand for those people and because they can. If you want something specific, you're going to pay more for it. So broad is going to be the cheapest when it comes to a CPM cost per impression level compared to targeted, of course. And of course, broad takes full advantage of Meta's AI. See, all the different targeted types of audiences you can do, broad will pretty much do itself automatically. It has access to all that data. It can do all those target types. It's just going to decide for you. Um, so ultimately it's just letting the algorithm do the work. Um, and you're basically just not having to pay that premium. Okay. And simply broad is more future proof. Ultimately where these online ads are going to end up is what we call one click advertising, where you say, here's my budget and the ads start running. The platform is going to scan your website, pull your products in, make AI generated creative based off your product images on your site, take the copy on your website, turn that into ad copy, uh, based off your target customer. And then basically it'll just figure out based off image recognition, you know, who to show that to, right? That's going to be the end. That's how it's going to work. So broad will stay around where you just let the platform decide who to target. All the targeting features will slowly be filtered out and taken away from the platforms as they just find, Hey, there's no reason for these as people are getting better results with broad. Um, and we want people to use our AI and our tool properly. Right? So again, the advantages here of targeting, right? targeting can outperform in the short term, right? If you have a list of 5,000 people who are all interested in your product, those 5,000 people will probably convert at a higher percent than a broad audience. But once you go through that group of people, it's over. That's it. You're done. So it can perform in the short term, right? And that's really what I mean here when targeting can outperform with low spend and data. So when you have data, targeting can outperform, right? You have a list of people, that audience will probably convert at a higher percent. You will make more from that audience than a broad audience. But once it runs out, you're done. That's it. That's the end of the show. And the second thing here is targeted can outperform with low spend or a new account, right? If you have a broad campaign, and let's say you're selling skateboards, you have a broad campaign, you give it images of like skateboards, whatever, and you have a targeted campaign where you say target skateboarders, that's what you give it. Day one, day three, Targeted might perform a little bit better because you're just giving it a head start because it didn't have any data as far as who to target. It might give you a little head start to just be telling it, hey, target skateboarders, right? It'll just give you a little head start. But broad, after a few days, will quickly learn, oh, this is who we're targeting. Okay, got it. Let's actually figure this out. As broad shows ads to different types of people and recognizes the commonalities between them as far as who engages with the ad. So targeting can outperform in the first couple of days if you have no data. But quickly broad will catch up. And over time, broad will excel it because it's cheaper. And because again, what we talked about before with the degradation of audiences and the overtime efficiency gain of broad. Okay. Now the second thing is targeting can also outperform with low spend. Again, if you're showing ads to people at a slower rate than that targeted audience is growing and that targeted audience uh, premium cost really is counteracted by the higher uh, conversion rate of that audience, targeting can outperform. And because you're spending so little, you're spending less than that audience is growing, and you're taking into account that the higher conversion rate is worth the extra premium, again, targeting can outperform. But because it's not future-proof, is it really worth investing in? Depends, right? Depends on what your goals are, goals are in your timeline and everything like that. All right, So, but I hope this starts to help you understand how to actually think about this, right? There's a lot of things at play, and you have to like very much think about it in a more logical way versus just going with what everyone is talking about. Okay, cool. So in general, what is broad? Just to define it really quick, right? Broad is just targeting based off country or state. If it's, you know, the product specific to that, age, gender, that's broad. Just very, very broad categories. You can test different broad audiences, but usually just leaving it completely open or just saying, hey, this is generally more of a female product, whatever, it's fine, right? Targeted, that's going to be things like lookalike audiences, right? 
taking a sample of either, you know, add to carts, website purchasers, whatever it may be, whatever data point you want to use, taking a sample of that data and making a lookalike of that data, usually one to 3%, right? So taking a lookalike of the top, you know, metrics of that data group, right? So lookalikes, right? Custom lists, another one where you maybe have a list of emails uh, you've gotten from an email signup form, uploading that, either building a lookalike based off that or directly uploading that list to target those people. Another common one, right? For retargeting or some more bottom of funnel. Interests, very common, just putting in, here's what our interest is. Here's like, we're looking for people who are interested in skateboards that are, you know, 18 years old, um, that also are interested in, in vans and jeans and like skate culture stuff, right? That would be like your interest stack. And then of course there's like engagement events, right? So target people who added to cart, target people who purchased, these are all targeted things, right? Just reiterating and making sure we are properly defining what these are, okay? So the last thing here when it comes to targeting types is Advantage Plus, which is, of course is the newest targeting type. And by the way, is absolutely the future. Um, so Advantage Plus will be the campaign that sticks around the longest. They're absolutely planning on replacing other campaign types with Advantage Plus. And again, this is getting us closer and closer to our final stage, which is our one-click advertising. And Advantage Plus is very similar to Broad. It is a Broad campaign. It runs off the same database. But the difference here is it's just more automated, so it does more things for you. There's less information that you can put into it. Um, as far as targeting and as far as your assets. So it's a little more automated, which is good. Again, we're leveraging that meta AI, which is what we want. And the second thing it does differently is it really does retargeting squared. So usually with broad campaigns, it's retargeting your bottom of funnel or people who have heard about you or have engaged with your ads or seen your ads. Broad will automatically retarget by itself with people who've engaged with your ads. Advantage Plus not only does that, but it also retargets similar people who have engaged on other similar products ads. So it's looking at your competitors and it's looking at similar products and it's also retargeting those people. So it kind of does retargeting twice and really squared in the way that exponentially works, okay? So Advantage Plus is really full funnel. It has more automation than broad, which again can add a little bit of efficiency and it does that extra retargeting, right? Which again can av really average out to be a higher return for you. So it's a very efficient and effective campaign type the main risks with Advantage Plus are that it can raise the account CPM by doing too much retargeting, right? So we've seen this a lot of the time where you have a broad campaign, you have Advantage Plus running next to each other. The Advantage Plus will often favor retargeting for that higher return. You'll see that your CPM goes up, your cost per impression goes up because now you're showing more qualified buyers your ads. They're much more expensive, of course, to show the ads to. Um, and ultimately, it increases your cost on that campaign, but can also increase your CPM across all your campaigns because it can negatively affect the user experience if you are doing too much retargeting. Um, and when you are doing, you know, someone sees your ad 10 times, you're like, I'm sick of this, this is really annoying. Meta does account for that and it knows that. It will actually increase the cost because it really makes the user experience worse for the platform. So it will increase your costs on all your ads, which will increase, it's really done through the CPM, right? So it can raise your account CPM and overly retarget though it can have a really good return. So it's a little bit of a wild horse that has to be reined in, um, but when it is reined in properly, it can be very, very effective. But you just have to be aware of that CPM and retargeting risk and be on the lookout for that. But in general, I think Advantage Plus in Broad are the two campaigns that you want to be using as the core uh, at the core of your ad account, okay? And one more note on Advantage Plus, they are very soon going to be releasing a little bit of targeting features to Advantage Plus where you're actually able to put in gender, uh, location and some of those broad targeting features. So Advantage Plus will soon have the ability to do country, state, age, and gender, um, which will give you a little bit more free reign when it comes to targeting. Um, so that again, they are gonna be working on that, uh, but in general, it's still gonna be used in the, pretty much the exact same way, okay? So next is exclusions, right? So a lot of people talk about exclusions. You see exclusions happening a lot in um, on the ads manager, there, again, there's a debate around exclusions, just like there's a debate around Advantage Plus, um, around like, should, should you do them, should you not, when should you use them? Ultimately, exclusion makes sense if the increased audience cost, again, that premium for doing specific targeting or anti-targeting, is less than the increase in revenue over time. So if the increase in CPMs or the increase in cost of your targeting is lower than the extra revenue you make or you know, is lower than the advantage of having, you know, more new customers per se, then it makes sense. You know, upload your customer list, 
and exclude everyone, right? But for most brands, it's really not worth doing, right? If you have 50,000 customers, 80,000 customers, and you're doing broad targeting, your existing customer list is such a small segment of the broad audience that if a couple of your customers see the ads again, it's just not a big deal. There's so many other people to target and your existing customers make up a very small percent of the overall pool. So there's not even a high chance of them seeing it because the pool is just so big, right? Even though the platform might say, oh, you know, it might not notice they're an existing customer and it might say this is a very qualified person because they bought, so obviously they're probably qualified. Of course, that can be a factor, but in general, the pool is so big that it's just not worth trying to, to do that and increase your cost um, just to exclude your 50,000 customers, which is a tiny fraction of the overall pool if you're doing broad, right? Now, if you're doing targeting, right, and you're targeting a small audience, your existing customers could be making up a very large pool of that targeted audience, in which case you kind of have to do exclusions because there's a very high chance you're going to be including your existing customers in that targeting if your goal is purely prospecting and acquiring new customer, that is. So if you're doing broad, you really don't have to worry about it. If you're doing more of a targeted, a smaller audience group, you might have to include your existing customers. For example, if you're retargeting people who added to cart, I'm sure a lot of those people that added to cart actually did purchase, right? So you're going to probably have to exclude the people that did add to cart and ended up purchasing from that add to cart retargeting list, obviously, right? So that's when you would want to use exclusions, but in general, unless you have millions and millions of customers, when you're doing broad, really don't need to do exclusions. It's just gonna increase your cost overall. So that's what I would say, but for targeted, you might have to exclude a few uh, because especially if you're doing something like the add to cart example, they're probably in that audience or at least some of them are, okay? So that's how it works. It's just a statistical chance that your existing customers will be included in your audience depending on the size you're targeting, which again is another advantage of broad. Cool, so let's hop into the table here. So this is really the best way in combination with those five ranges I showed you earlier to decide what audiences you want to use. So let me quickly explain what this table is and how to use it. So on the left here, we have all our key targeting types and there's a few others, but in general, they can be kind of categorized under one of these broad advantage plus, which is broad with a little retargeting essentially interests, lookalikes, engagement events. So that's targeting things based off of like video viewers or add to cart people or that kind of thing. And then you have custom lists, which are email, CSV files you upload, uh, that kind of thing, where you're targeting a very specific group of people. Now, of course, there's a few others, but in general, you can kind of categorize those uh, under these. So I hope that makes sense. Now, on the top, we have our variables. So these are all ranked from one to six, one being the best, six being the worst, on CPM or the general cost of that targeting. The amount of upfront data needed, so if it's a one, it means it needs no upfront data to perform its best. Longevity, so how long the campaign performs, and really if any creative fatigue comes into play, or just how long in general this campaign can be sustained for um, before it goes out, right? And of course, longevity is truly determined by the exact audience size, right? But in general, this is gonna give you that ranking. The future-proofness of the campaign, so whether in the next 12 months, 24 months, 36 months, this campaign is still going to be around, which is good to know whether you should be investing in appreciating assets or depreciating, depreciating assets. And the last is what I call fast and high ROAS, which is basically the velocity at which this achieves a high return, right? So how fast this achieves a high return and how high of a return it, it really achieves, all right? And so if you actually just rank these, and if each metric here is evenly weighted, which of course the weight of each metric is going to depend on the brand, but if each metric is evenly weighted at one point each, the best performing in general for most brands would actually be Advantage Plus and then Broad, really those two, okay? But we're going to go through specific examples uh, with these, all right? So let's hop right into that. All right, so targeting example one, this is the drop shipper, and we're going to go through three examples here, so I can almost guarantee your brand will be more or less included into one of these. Okay, so the first is the drop shipper, right? They have a brand new ad account. Maybe they're selling a niche, so a smaller audience group, a niche violin accessory, very random. Not sure what that accessory would be, but a niche violin accessory. They want fast cash, so they're really not in this for the long run. Um, and it's a drop shipping style business in general, again, which is you know, it could be more of an impulse buy, again, more fast cash, usually low budget, and three SKUs. Maybe they have three variations of maybe like a chin rest accessory, right? Straightforward. A lot of dropshipping brands are run like this, okay? 
So what does this actually look like? Well, let's kind of take a look behind the curtain here. We'll take all this out and we'll look at our charts. So they have a very low budget, a couple SKUs, no data because it's a new brand. Uh, they have a very short sales cycle. It's going to be more of an impulse buy product, a cheaper product, and they want cash now. That's the goal. So what kind of targeting would we do for this brand? Well, let's actually look at the table and I'll actually hop over to sheets here. So first and foremost, we have to look at the budget, how much money they're willing to expend before seeing results. Not a lot. So already we're probably gonna be looking at the top three here because these other ones are going to be pretty expensive. So we'll probably be looking at the top three. Okay. Next is upfront data needed. So how much data do they have? Well, it's a new ad account. They don't have any customer lists or email lists or anything like that. All of these need a lot of data. Lookalikes, all this stuff needs a lot of data. So they probably for a long time until they have a lot of data, probably won't be wanting to use these. Okay. Next is longevity. Well, this particular brand doesn't really care about longevity. Um, so this doesn't really matter. They don't really care about this metric. Okay. Same thing with future proof, right? They're not really looking at what's going to be future proof. Um, but what they do care about is fast cash. Now they want cash. Now they want to make a return as quick as possible. So what would they do for that? Okay. So again, because of the upfront data needed and because of the cost issues, we're probably going to be looking at this top three rows. So that really leaves us with broad advantage plus and interests. Now they do want fast cash. And unfortunately the best way to make a high return quickly is to have a custom list because if you had a thousand people who are extremely interested in your product and you just show them your ad, they would probably convert at a higher percent. So ideally they would have a custom list because that performs best, but because it needs so much data to perform that they don't have it because it can be more expensive in general, we're probably going to be looking more at the top three. So they would probably be looking at broad advantage plus and interests. Now, if we look at the fast and high row as we know that, you know, broad can perform right pretty quickly, but it does take longer if you have zero data than interest would or than advantage plus would, right? Advantage plus is broad. It just does retargeting, which is why it can give you a fast and high ROAS, but it does require a little bit more data to do that. So they would probably be looking at running an interest-based campaign. And then the second that interest-based that interest -based campaign starts to get a little bit of data, they would want to probably be do a broad and advantage plus campaign as well. So for this particular brand, they would be looking at broad advantage plus or interest. So maybe they would target to start off a campaign with a violent interest just to get a little traction that will probably perform better in the first one to seven days than abroad, because again, they have no data for that broad campaign to perform advantage campaign. And they could probably also do that too in the first, um, maybe the seven to 14 days after that interest starts to get a little bit of traction and they can quickly switch over to broad. But this particular brand, we'd probably start off single interest campaign, violin, just to give the, the ads manager a little head start in who to target, quickly switch over to broad, and then we could also test out Advantage Plus with a little bit more of that retargeting feature um, and try to take some market share from our competitors, bottom of funnel ads, okay? So that's, for this brand, what they would probably wanna be doing. And you'll notice, with all these examples, most brands, the core is gonna be broad and Advantage Plus for most brands. But these nuances, such as using interests at the start to get a little head start, can make a difference, okay? Um, but I hope that makes sense in the logical flow and how we would determine which audiences they could use, right? And in general, when you have no data, when you have low spend, their audiences are all going to probably be performing fairly close. Uh, but they'll probably notice a little bit of advantage in the first seven days with interests. And then in the following seven to 14 days, probably a little bit of advantage with Advantage Plus. And then after a month to three months, Broad will probably be their top performer. And that's just how it works, okay? So let's go to the next example here. So for this example, this is a lot of brands as well. This is the season brand. And by the way, if you are a season brand, if you feel like your brand kind of matches this description, feel free to subscribe and like this video um, if you found this helpful so far, all right? So let's hop into the season brand. So this would be an old account, lots of data. They've been around for years, maybe three years of data, four years of data. Um, maybe they have a customer list. They have quite a few purchasers. So they have pixel data. They have purchase account data in the ad account itself. And maybe they have some email lists as well. We'll just say this is a premium athleisure brand. Um, they're really looking for sustainable growth, right? They want to be here for the next decade, not the next year. Uh, so they're really focused on the long term. Maybe a D2C brand, right? They typically have a higher budget, uh, maybe not extremely high, but they've been around for a while um, and they're willing to spend and that's okay with them. They probably have 
maybe 500 SKUs, including variations. Uh, so lots of products, lots of data, lots of budget. This is obviously where everyone wants to be, but let's go through how this brand would choose their audiences, okay? So again, let's take a look behind the curtain here and actually see what their chart looks like. Again, high budget, lots of SKUs, lots of data. Maybe uh, for athleisure, it's a higher, uh, more premium product, but in, tip, in, in general, maybe a month to convert. It's not gonna take that long, uh, but still longer than those impulse buy products, all right, which we're gonna wanna keep in mind. And they're looking for sustainable sales. They're willing to invest and not see a return for a little while, okay? All right, so let's hop into how this brand would choose their targeting. So this would really depend on the season in which this brand is in. Are they more in a Q4, time to liquidate your entire, fu entire funnel and cash out for Black Friday, or are they more in Q1, Q2, filling up that funnel again and acquiring customers? Depends on the situation, okay? So we'll go through a few here. So number one, cost CPM. They want efficiency, they want a good return, but it's not the most important thing for them, okay? Upfront data needed, they have all the data, so all these are fair game. Longevity, they're gonna be wanting to focus on campaigns with more longevity. They want a more sustainable campaign type, so they know they can count on it, can count on it uh, if they invest in it now, okay? Ideally, again, a future-proof campaign that's likely not going to go away. Um, and fast and high ROAS, again, you know, they want a return, they want efficiency, but they're not looking for a return today necessarily. So they don't need that. Okay. So how would this brand figure out what campaigns to run? So first of all, they could do all of these, but I would say something like lookalikes would probably not be that useful for them. Again, lookalikes are included in broad. Lookalikes are included in Vantage Plus. You just don't select it automatically. And if they really wanted to cash out, they wouldn't probably cash out with lookalikes. They would cash out with like a custom list or an engagement event uh, because they have the data and we know that this is going to give you a higher return than lookalikes. So for them, lookalikes are probably kind of a middle of the road where if they want to prospect more efficiently, they should just do broad. And if they want to really cash out, they may as well just do a custom list or engagement event. So it's kind of a middle of the road. It will probably be a good return, uh, but it's not going to really be a specialized campaign for liquidating the funnel, cashing out on data, or prospecting. It's just gonna kind of be pretty efficient, but it's just kind of in the middle. So for a brand like this, I'd probably say lookalikes, not gonna be that effective. Interests, so again, interests are also kind of in the middle of the road for a brand like this. They have a lot of data, so their broad would be performing great. It has so much data to run off of. If they wanna cash out on their data off a customer list or add to carters or some sort of more qualified customer, they could run an engagement event campaign, retargeting at the carts or something like that. So again, interests. Interest can be good at getting meta a head start uh, when you have no data. So interest for them, broad's probably accounting for those interests. So really wouldn't really need to do those, okay? So that probably leaves us with broad advantage plus engagement events and custom lists. And now they could run all these, right? It just depends on the season they're in. Q1, Q2, Q3, maybe they're in a customer acquisition phase and they are just trying to acquire customers as efficiently as possible. In that case, engagement events and retargeting, probably not the most efficient way to get customers. You can cash out, you can get a high return, but if you're just looking to acquire customers, Broad and Advantage Plus is gonna do that at a better return. Come Q4, come end of Q3, now it's kind of Black Friday season, now it's time to do some retargeting, a little bit of bottom of funnel clearing. Now would be a good time for them to maybe upload a customer list to do a reactivation campaign. Now might be a good time to do um, an engagement event list where they uh, retarget ad to carters, page viewers, video watchers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and they can really cash out and basically liquidate their funnel, knowing that they're going to have an amazing ROAS for the first month or two. Uh, but after that, their customers are going to be fried and they're not going to really have any more goodwill uh, to capitalize on. Okay. So they could run really all of these depending on the season they're in and their objective. But in general, again, most of the year, it's going to be brought in Advantage Plus. When there's those times they want to cash out, do a little engagement event, do a little custom list, they have the data for it. So it'll work really well. They're going to have a higher cost, but because they have so much data, it won't matter and they'll have a really crazy uh, week or month until that data runs out. Okay. So again, this is how you kind of want to think about it. Um, and this is like the logical flow you'd go through when you're looking to build out your targeting. Okay. So let's go through one more example here. And this example is what I would say most brands uh, fall into, which is kind of a middle of the road, right? So this is a, again, a three-year-old account. So some data, maybe not as much data as that last example. Um, I would say in general, that last example would probably actually be more around like a 10 year data mark. Um, so they probably would have more data than this brand. 
This brand's a mid-market cosmetics brand, so not a premium product, not that expensive, but not something you probably find at Walmart. Maybe more of like a Target-style brand where a little bit more expensive, mid-market, but pretty much anyone could buy it, and it's generally just going to appeal to the masses, okay? In general, they need cash for inventory, um, but they're looking 12 months out, okay? So they're really looking a year out. They kind of do need cash now. They can't really float much more inventory, um, but unlike this brand, you know, this brand here, you know, they're fine if they don't make a return for a while, right? They, they don't necessarily need money this year. It's really about this decade, okay? And this is a D2C brand, again, medium budget. So they have some money to spend, but they have to be pretty responsible with it. They definitely can't make mistakes. Um, and maybe they have 18 SKUs and a little bit of data, maybe a couple thousand purchases, maybe 20,000 purchases, 50,000 purchases. Um, maybe they have 18 SKUs, so some products, um, maybe a few hundred purchases in the ads manager. So there's a little bit of data, but it's not going to be a pile of gold that they can just liquidate into cash at any time. It's going to take um, more time to really build that up. So again, this is where I would say most brands fall into, which is why I call it the classic e-com example. Um, so let's actually look at where this brand would be at. So budget, kind of mid of, middle of the line. They definitely have some SKUs for sure, but nothing like the other brand. Um, they have a little bit of data, but again, a little bit more in the middle. Some data, but it's not gonna be enough to do an extreme retargeting campaign on. Maybe a little bit of a moderate sales cycle, so five, six days, people research the products a little bit. They're a little bit more expensive, but it's, you know, you have a lot of people that also impulse buy the product. And their objective is, in general, they want sustainable sales. They don't want to burn the brand out in the next year, uh, but they also do need cash fairly soon in the next 30 to 60 days uh, to be able to get more inventory. And this is where most brands will probably find themselves, okay? So let's go over an example here of what our targeting would look like with the table. So in general, this brand is middle of the road on cost. They're probably gonna be looking at the first four here in terms of affordability and CPMs. Now, in terms of data, they have a little bit of data, but doing something like a custom list, they could maybe retarget their 30, 40,000 customers. Uh, they maybe could do look like off that, but it's not, it, it would be good, but it's gonna be kind of expensive. Um, you know, if they retarget those people directly and they would definitely burn through that list pretty quickly so in general they're probably really won't do much engagement event or custom list retargeting here again they're focused on longevity for sure it's definitely something that's important to this brand um at least for the next year right and again uh future proof wise they want campaigns that they can invest in for the next year so we're probably going to be looking at both for longevity and future proofing probably four and up um, so these other kind of campaigns maybe in very very special cases but not as much okay and then fast and high ROAS, they definitely need a return in the next 30 to 60 days. Um, but uh, in general, they can wait a little bit, but definitely can't just invest and wait months and months, okay? So in the case of this brand, what would we do? Again, it's gonna be similar to the previous brand where it depends on what season they're in. Again, because they have some data, Broad and Advantage Plus will be working for them. Interests, once again, they could probably do a little bit of interest, but because they already have you know, 30,000 customers, they have some purchases in, Interest is really just going to be a more expensive broad for them, um, and it's not going to really have a high return for the most part because broad does have just enough data in Adventure Plus because it doesn't require too much data to perform. Uh, these will probably be doing pretty well for them. So interest, again, for this brand, probably really not worth it, okay? Now, looking at something like lookalikes, you know, they're a little more expensive. They have a little bit of a return. This brand could maybe consider a little bit of lookalikes. Now, because Broad and Vantage Plus also do look alike retargeting really without telling you, they might just be better off without them. So if this brand wanted to in a sales season or a season when they're looking to maybe do a little bit more cashing out, uh, Black Friday Q4, they could do a little bit of lookalike retargeting during that season. But for most of the year for prospecting, probably wouldn't want to do much on the lookalike side of things. Broad and Advantage Plus would probably be performing pretty close to the lookalike audience at a cheaper cost. Um, so they probably want to stick with that. But Q4, maybe do a little look like retargeting. That's okay. Burn through that audience a bit, um, and they could do that, okay? Now, engagement events and custom lists. Again, good return, and for this brand, they don't have a lot of data, so these aren't going to be as effective as they could be if they had a ton of data. And they're also a little bit more risky with the amount that they cost if there's no return, right? So this brand could potentially run these again during a more Q4 sales season when they're just looking at liquidating their bottom of funnel and looking at kind of taking out their customer list. 
Um, but this would probably only be run for 30 days, two weeks at the most when they're looking at doing engagement event retargeting and custom list retargeting. So for this particular brand, this would be maybe once a year for up to 30 days they'd be running this during Q4, during Black Friday season. Um, but for the most part, they might be running a lookalike for like two or three months to kind of burn through that audience during a sales season from like Black Friday to uh, end of December. Uh, but again, most of the year, they're just going to be running Broad Advantage Plus, right? So that's kind of how this brand will look, okay? So I hope that makes sense. Now, also keep in mind for a lot of these brands, average order value does matter, right? So again, Broad and Advantage Plus do retargeting by themselves. But if you are selling an extremely expensive product, you sometimes might have to force more retargeting by doing something like an engagement event. So if a particular brand, and this is kind of an outlier example, if a particular brand has a very long sales cycle, very long, we're talking about $50,000 couches, we're talking about really expensive mattresses, that kind of thing. If a brand has very expensive products, it might make sense for this brand to do more lookalike audience, more engagement, and more custom list, because in this particular case, it's just their customer needs a lot of touch points, and if Broad Advantage Plus um, are not automatically doing a lot of retargeting, um, you might have to do a little bit more manual retargeting on your end to just make sure that those really expensive products, those kind of outlier products, are getting sold um, in a reasonable time frame. So for brands with more expensive products, you will always be leaning a little bit more on the edge of doing a little bit more lookalike, a little bit more engagement event, a little bit more customer list. Uh, but still, your core will ultimately be Broad Advantage Plus, especially for prospecting and especially for bringing new people into the funnel, okay? So I hope that makes sense and I hope those three examples you can kind of see yourself in and you can kind of logically think through using this table depending on your goals, depending on your situation, what kind of targeting you're going to be doing. For most brands, 80 to 90% of the year, it's going to be Broad Advantage Plus. Um, and then for those sales seasons, um, maybe a little bit of engagement events, some customer lists, maybe a little bit of lookalikes, um, knowing that that ROAS will probably not be scalable and you're going to burn out your audience in the next month or two, depending on how much you're spending and how big that audience is. And for new brands that are just getting into the space, Maybe a little bit of interest can give you a head start for the first 7 to 14 days, um, but after you've gotten a little bit of data, Meta directionally knows where you're going with it, then you can switch over to Broad Advantage Plus. Um, and most brands, this kind of approach will work for you, okay? So hope that makes sense. Now, in this video, I will not be showing you and building out the campaigns. That's going to be a separate video for account structure, but in that video, we'll be showing you you know, how to place the targeting um, and how you want to be structuring your campaigns with CBO, ABO, and it's just basically CBO, by the way, um, other than Advantage Plus, but it's just going to need to be showing you what that campaign structure looks like with said targeting, okay? All right, now that really wraps up the last example here, so let's go through a quick summary, right? The best targeting for you will depend on your brand's budget, how long you're willing to expand uh, spend without seeing a return, data collected, how much data you have both on your account, off your account, and then on the pixel, of course, right? And really, the account and pixel are the same, um, but there's just some data you can't physically really see in the ads manager that is collected on your pixel. That's why I'm referring to them as two different sources. Desire for longevity, right? So really how often do you wanna be refreshing creatives? Because with examples like this, if you want your engagement event and customer list and lookalikes to perform, longevity-wise, you're gonna to have to be putting new creatives in, new copy, new things in all the time, because that audience is gonna burn out quick. And you're gonna have to start to show them, you're going to need to show them new things for it to work at all for any period of time, okay? So how long do you want the campaign to have a sustained ROAS for without you changing anything? That's longevity, okay? The next point here, of course, is desire for future-proof campaigns. So do you wanna invest in a campaign type that might be disappearing in the next 12 to 36 months, like realistically? M maybe you don't, maybe you don't really care. It just depends on what you're doing, okay? Next is the need for cash flow. Some brands need cash today. Things happen, you need to generate cash today. And that's okay. And there's ways to do that with some more of these, right, more bottom of funnel style campaigns um, or more of these kind of like uh, warmed up audience campaigns. So that might be your goal. Otherwise, if you're looking more for a sustained ROAS trajectory and ro slow ROAS growth over time and efficiency growth over time, you're gonna wanna go more broad, okay? Then, you know, what are your current revenue and acquisition objectives? Is it Q1? Are we, is, it all your, is every customer in the world basically fried and we're uh, just trying to fill up the funnel? Or is it Q4 and we're trying to cash out and liquidate our funnel and our customer list and all the goodwill and our customer base? 
depends. What are you doing? That's going to determine which campaign or targeting type you're going to want to do. Okay. And the last is really your sales cycle and APV. You, if you have a really long sales cycle, it takes a lot of touch points. You're a more expensive brand. You're going to lean towards some more of those retargeting, some more of those manual uh, campaign types. Though broad and advantage plus do retarget automatically. Sometimes if you have a really expensive product, it can be beneficial to do a little manual retargeting. It can be. Um, as long as you're not spending too much in frying that funnel, okay? Um, and of course, sales cycle, average product value, most brands won't really need to do that. It's only for those outlier brands where you're selling very, very expensive products, okay? And of course, one more factor here is like the nicheness of the brand. Like I mentioned before, with putting in an interest at the start, uh, if you have no data, that can be beneficial to give you a head start. Um, but in general, you don't have to worry about that one, all right? So ultimately, this leaves us with the simple conclusion that Broad Advantage Plus will be your core. For most brands, most of the year, you're going to be running these. So some of those special seasons, um, some of those more sale, uh, customer liquidation type times, you can do some more of these bottom of funnel type campaigns, okay? So I hope that helps. Um, I hope this gives you a framework for how to think about targeting instead of just saying Broad is best, never do retargeting, never do uh, custom lists, never do lookalikes. Sometimes it can make sense um, for short periods of time, depending on your goals, right? Uh, but again, at the end of the day, it will be mostly broad and advantage plus. All right, so what's next? Now, this was just a module on targeting from the Meta Masterclass 2023, which is part of the overall uh, masterclass, which has sections on creative and Google and a bunch of other topics. This is just one section um, of Meta, and in some of the following sections we're gonna be going over. Uh, really next is best account structures per situation. So we're going to be applying this targeting theory um, and we're going to be t applying that to account structures. Again, situationally based, based on your goals and your brand. Then we're going to go over ROAS, why it matters, results and attribution and measurement. That's a big one. Soft metrics, are they correlated to profit, which is also included under that. Creative testing. Now there is already a separate video out on creative. Really, really good video. Um, definitely check that one out. I'll link that below. Then we have attribution. Again, similar to like the results and attributions section, but this is gonna be more about cross-platform attribution rather than platform attribution. Budgeting, scaling, and cost caps, all right? So that's what we're gonna be going over in the following sections. So if this was useful, some of these might be out by now. Other, uh, others of these will not be, uh, but definitely check out that creative video if you have not seen that video yet. Um, otherwise, let me know what you thought of this. The spreadsheet will also be linked below with the table. Um, and yeah, get your targeting unlocked. It's really straightforward. All right. See you in the next one.